Hey guys, so today's part 2 to a video that I made a few months ago called Mopar Rare One-Off Builds. In that video I showed you guys one of the only manual Dodge Charger SRT8s out there, as well as some amazing convertible builds of various challengers and chargers, including a Hellcat and a Demon. Today I want to look at more one-off and unique builds from the world of Mopar. I have 5 vehicles on tap today including a Chrysler 300C Manual, Chrysler 300C Supercharged Manual, the fastest Dodge Magnum, a Ram SRT10 Bullet, and a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Hellcat. So let's get into looking at these very rare and unique builds. So the first car is a 2010 Chrysler 300C SRT8 that was built with a 6-speed manual transmission. This is definitely a rare sight because Chrysler never offered a manual with any 300 that was ever made from 2005 until the present day, so this is truly one of a kind. The build was done by Cleveland Power & Performance in Ohio, who has also done many other sweet builds. If you do want to see the start to end process, they take pictures every step of the way on their Facebook page, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So for this 300C, they purchased it as a theft recovery with 88,000 miles on it, when the car had no drivetrain and some missing interior parts and in 2010 there were only 866 300C SRT8s produced, with just 255 in the USA and 40 in silver, so this is a super rare car to begin with. A 2009 Challenger SRT8 with a manual transmission was then donated, and the parts were used from that for the build as well. The powertrain is more beefed up than a stock 300C SRT8, as the team added a performance cam and valve springs, Urson push rods, manly valves, Johnson lifters, ported cylinder heads and intake manifold, K&N cold air intake, and an 85mm BBK throttle body. The transmission is a 6-speed manual Tramac that was found in the Challenger, and there's the 3.92 Getrag Limited Slip rear differential. The team also put on American Racing long tube headers, high flow cats, and of course a catback exhaust. So when all said and done, the car put down 444 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque to the wheels on a dyno test, making it one of the most powerful 300C first-gen SRT8s to ever exist. And they also wanted to make the 300 look good on the outside, so they had the car professionally painted in a beautiful B5 blue, and they also added some nice exterior touches, like gloss black stripes on the hood, a gloss black roof, and gloss black over the deck lid. The front grille was painted gloss black alongside other trim pieces in the mirrors, and the taillights were tinted as well to complete the look. The team also gave the 300 a KW Variant 2 coilover suspension, along with Hotchkiss sway bars in the front and rear for a great looking stance and improved handling. The car also gets OEM Charger and Challenger wheels that are found on recent scat packs, which are 20 by 9 inches, and they're painted in Brass Monkey, and have 245-45-20 tires on those, and beneath the wheels are the stock Brembo brakes and cross-drilled and slotted rotors. Inside the car is pretty much stock with the functional EVIC system, touchscreen and navigation, and the kicker audio system, the only thing added was a Hurst shifter. This 300 is fully drivable and insurable now after being inspected by the Ohio State Patrol, just it will have a rebuilt title. And it was also featured on the November 2016 cover of Mopar Max, as you'll see on screen. Any Mopar enthusiast can really appreciate what a magnificent car this manual 300 is, so much attention to detail was given to the car, and the result is a one of a kind beast. The second car is a crazy 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon Hellcat. This is being sold by a Mitsubishi dealership in Phoenix, Arizona called Mark Mitsubishi, and they have listed the car on their website and across various Facebook pages for a whopping $147,992 before taxes and other fees. So if you want a monthly payment, that's $1,694 a month after putting down 30 grand. So the base used on this build is a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, and then the shop America's Most Wanted 4x4 in Holly, Michigan did the swap, putting a 6.2 liter supercharged Hellcat V8 into that Gladiator, giving it 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. The original Rubicon was a crew cab with a billet silver exterior and a dark saddle black interior, and it's pretty much still new with just 1,456 miles on it. It's got a lot of add-ons like Falcon shocks, a Yeti track bar, 22-inch black Rhino wheels with 37-inch Nitto grappler tires, and then your typical navigation, heated leather seats, blind spot and cross traffic alert, and the tow package. As for the Hellcat swap, it's got everything like the Hellcat engine, transmission, cold air intake, power steering cooler, stainless steel 3.5 inch complete exhaust system, Hellcat PCM, and a few other pieces like the exhaust manifold, powertrain harness, and transfer case input support housing. This is definitely an awesome vehicle, but some are questioning the price tag since a new Gladiator starts around $44,000 new, and then this Hellcat swap kit from America's Most Wanted 4x4 starts at around $60,000. 
but as always, dealerships like to mark up the cost of anything that they sell. One other point is that on the Mitsubishi website, they do claim that this car gets their various warranties, like basic, drivetrain, corrosion, and maintenance, which is nice on a swap like this. America's Most Wanted 4x4 also provides a warranty as well, but the Jeep one is going to be void from the aftermarket parts and labor. For the third car, we go back to the 300, as Cleveland Power & Performance also did another project, doing a manual trans conversion and then also supercharging a 2008 Chrysler 300C SRT8. So unlike the previous SRT8 manual swap, this car would have a clean title at the end of it. These SRT8s were pretty hard to come by as well, with just 1,388 in total production worldwide for 2008, and just 670 of those for the US. This is actually the only 2008 300 SRT that was converted into a manual. Once again, the 300C was originally theft recovery with no interior, and a 2009 Challenger SRT8 with just 57,000 miles on it was used for all the parts needed for the swap, including the drivetrain and interior. So the team installed a Vortec V3 supercharger on the 6.1 liter V8 Hemi, and ran 8 pounds of boost. They added Cook's long tube headers, high flow cats, and a Corsa catback exhaust as well. Of course, the transmission is a 6-speed manual Tramec from the Challenger, with a brand new OEM twin disc clutch and her shifter inside. It's also got the 3.92 ratio Get Rag Limited Slip Rear Differential and Axle Shafts. And when getting dyno tuned, this beast put down a whopping 455 horsepower and 453 pound-feet of torque to the wheels. As they always do, they made the car look great on the exterior. The 300C was repainted in brilliant black, and they also made a custom grille for the front end. To help with performance, this car has carbon fiber strut tower caps, a custom painted valve cover, a Moroso catch can, along with a painted intake manifold. Like the previous 300, this one is also on KW coilovers, and this time they went a step further to give the car Hellcat factory Brembo brakes and rotors, with the calipers painted in forest green metallic to stand out on the all black car and the wheels are taken from a 2017 Dodge Charger Daytona 392 with 275 40 20 tires. The next vehicle is another crazy build, but unfortunately I don't have many pictures of it, so I'll be using mostly stock photos of the car. But one man, Mike Brady, has totally modded out his 2005 Ram SRT10 to run a 10 second quarter mile. Stock, this SRT10 has 500 horsepower and 525 pound feet of torque, and can do 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds, and the quarter mile around 13 seconds, not bad for a 5,000 pound truck. Well anyways, Mike worked to double the factory horsepower, so it has around 1,000 to the crank, using methanol, a supercharger, and various other parts. This truck build was referred to as the 6,000 pound bullet. After basic engine mods, the work started with boring the engine, sleeving the block, having a forged crank, different pistons, and a comp cam. After that, he took it further with injectors for nitros and the whole nitros express system itself. He then went and added a Paxton supercharger and aftercooler, running about 9 psi. And to keep the engine from exploding, an FJO water and methanol injection system was installed. The truck has QA1 adjustable shocks and springs, a Dana 60 front axle, Caltrax traction bar system, upgraded rotors and pads to go with the Brembo calipers, and interestingly, they had to downsize the brakes at the rear so he could fit 15 inch drag slicks. Overall, Mike ended up running an impressive 10.73 second quarter mile, but that came with needing four different sets of exhausts and many broken engine parts, including breaking the pistons. Last but not least, we have the world's fastest Dodge Magnum, which is owned by Nate Jenkins and put down a quarter mile time of 8.56 seconds at 155.6 miles per hour, which is a world record, not just for the quickest Magnum, but also for the quickest wagon around. This record was set last year in early July 2018, and the car was built in junction with those at high horse performance who work on various Hemis. This car is a 2006 Magnum SRT8, and under the hood you can find a 404 cubic inch BES built engine with a stock block, Thytek cylinder heads, an HHP custom grind camshaft, ported 6.1 intake manifold, and a Pro Charger F1A94 supercharger. The transmission is a heavy duty TH400, and there is a 9 inch rear differential, and 15 inch wheels were used along with 275mm tires for traction. Overall, the car weighed in at just 3,875 pounds. Seems like a lot of weight, but it's actually not that much for a Magnum. As for the magical run, it did a 1.25 second 60 foot time, 5.468 seconds through an 8th mile, 
1,000 feet in 7.138 seconds, and the quarter mile in 8.563 seconds. So that's the end of this video guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at some of the more one-off Mopars out there. What do you guys think of these builds? Let me know down in the comment section below. Anyways, thanks for watching, subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.